Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. It's true that the SEC defeated library and it was a terrible, horrendous, truly bad ruling. Uh, all sorts of logical fallacies and I've covered it in great detail to this point. But even so, I want to share with you 10 reasons uh, from Attorney John Deaton that uh, this is not going, the fact that this happened, that the, again, the library was defeated by the SEC, 10 reasons why Ripple and XRP holders are going to be just fine in all likelihood. Uh, but uh, before going any further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. And I would like to encourage you to uh, subscribe to John Deaton's Crypto Law TV YouTube channel here. Uh, if you just type in Crypto Law TV with no spaces, it will pop right up. And I know that he'd appreciate the support and uh, go ahead and give him a subscribe. And so um, he, he did a pretty thorough breakdown of uh, on his channel just the other day in, in terms of his analysis of what the SEC v. Library case means. And I want to talk about a lot of this right now because it's broken down on Twitter here. Uh, so take a look at this. This is from John Deaton's crypto law organization's Twitter account. It wrote 10 reasons why the library case should not impact the Ripple case. And I'll pause to note the only way in which I personally believe that this is going to impact the case uh, now that I have you know, all of the, the details surrounding what's going on here, and I'm sufficiently informed, the only thing that's going to impact the case is that the SEC is going to undoubtedly, uh, you know, file something, you know, there'll be a new legal brief sent to Judge Torres, and it's going to cite this one, and then they're going to try and make it sound as though the SEC of uh, the library case ruling applies to, to the Ripple, uh, SEC v. Ripple case, but it actually really doesn't. So it could influence, it, it, and potentially, how, how the judge feels, you know, Judge Torres feels about this. But I don't know that it's going to be meaningful. I'm, I'm skeptical on the idea of it being meaningful. I, I think it's going to be a big nothing. And if you look in terms of the laws I go through this, you'll see, and I think it'll feel a lot better after we, uh, by the time this video is over. It's pretty clear that from a legal perspective, it's just like apples and oranges from the, the library case compared to the Ripple case. So check this out. Reason one. The judge in the Ripple case does not need to follow the SG case because the SG case is in the first circuit, Ripple is in the second circuit. So what's being referenced here is the SG case, it stands for Stock Generation Case, and apparently uh, there's a program here, and this is from 2003, um, they were doing allegedly some shady stuff here. Uh, here, I'll read the top part. On May 21st, 2003, the SEC obtained permanent injunctions against SG LTD and relief defendants SG Perfect and SG Trading. The SEC alleged that SG LTD, an offshore entity, operated a massive internet pyramid scheme under the name Stock Generation. So there you go. So that's what he's referencing here, Stock Generation. Now, what, what he's getting at, though, again, um, the judge doesn't have to follow this. This, this, this has precedent because that's in the first cir circuit. Uh, the Ripple case is in the second circuit, meaning that since they're in different legal circuits, there's different precedent. The library, the attorneys in the, in, in the, obviously, again, operating in the First Circuit, they had to work based on different legal precedent. Um, it's, which is, again, this is not something I would have known before, you know, pretending to be a lawyer on YouTube. You know, <laughs> before the SEC uh, sued Ripple and effectively XRP holders as, as an extension, uh, I, I never would have guessed that something like this, where the legal precedent would be different depending on exactly where, because it's all in the United States here, but, but within different circuits. Uh, you follow different uh, rules of the road, effectively, which I, I just found to be interesting. In this case, it's good, though. Uh, reason number two. The law cited in the library case, Warfield, does not apply to the Ripple case. They occurred in different federal circuits. So, again, kind of similar to reason number one. Uh, then reason three. Rejecting broad vertical commonality, which deals with the common enterprise, applies to Ripple. That was not the case for library. So, yeah, so library had uh, some things not going so well for it in terms of, and, and Attorney Deaton brought up this point, in terms of the three prongs of the Howey test, and I say three because we're, we're condensing uh, two prongs into one, um, and I've talked about it before, so I'm not going to explain that again in this video, but in terms of the three prongs of the Howey test, the first two uh, effectively, at least this is certainly what the judge argued, it, 
library just kind of seeded the points in terms of investment money, investment of money in common enterprise. And so when you're talking about ver vertical commonality here, well, what, what, what we're really talking about here is common interest. If you're talking about vertical commonality, that's not common enterprise. We're talking about common interest because there are going to be all sorts of people that have interest in a particular asset. It doesn't even have to be XRP or a cryptocurrency, but it doesn't mean that they're actually related in any other way than they like whatever the asset is and they'd like for it to continue to exist and do well. You know, that's not, that doesn't mean there's some sort of common enterprise. Here, and that's completely different. Reason number four and this is fascinating here, but the SEC, they're going outside of legal precedent and 76 years of case law. Check this out. In 76 years of case law, no investment contract has ever been found when there's no connection between the purchaser and the seller. So think about this. You know, even if the SEC could, uh, you know, really uh, trip up Ripple by, you know, get them found guilty of specific transactions in the early days of XRP. Okay, fine. But when you're talking about XRP in secondary markets after, at this point, close to a decade, to claim that that represents an investment contract when 76 years of case law, there's nothing even close to that. There's never been any connection found where, you know, people trading something on secondary markets with no connection. It, like, how... If you're the SEC, you have to know this. They're just going forward with it anyway and hoping that the judge falls for it. I don't think she's going to. I really don't think that she's going to. Reason five. Judge Torres could find the argument to be deeply flawed to argue otherwise, just as John Deaton believes. Oh, well, that's for damn sure. It's a deeply flawed argument. Well, many... Of, Think about it, though. Many of their arguments are deeply flawed, hypocritical, and they've held one position and then flip-flopped and held another position. This happened how many times in the SEC v. Ripple case after almost two years? It's completely ridiculous. So the judge can see through all of this, though. These are flawed arguments. And, you know, the, the fact that all these amicus briefs have been filed and um, I haven't seen any get denied to this point anyway, that's kind of telling. She wants to make sure she's armed with knowledge and she thinks all this matters, and it does. So that's fantastic. Reason number six, the XRP ledger has utility to it. MasterCard, Visa, and Uphold use it. It's a substitute for fiat, and some companies use it to pay people. Reason seven, multiple international jurisdictions have declared XRP not a security. United Arab Emirates, Japan, UK, Singapore, Switzerland, etc. Yeah, and so look, nothing against LBC at all. I think that they got a bum deal. But in this case, with XRP being a large cap cryptocurrency, one of the most well-known in the space, uh, it's, it's a case that's gotten significant attention on a global scale from regulators the world over. And it's been declared to not be a security by multiple nations. LBC didn't have that going for it. It's just another consideration. Reason number eight. Numerous companies, uh, companies have filed a Michi and cite how they use XRP without any knowledge or association with Ripple. Yeah, so let's pause to note here, and this is truly powerful. It is highly consequential that there are over 75,000 XRP holders represented by Attorney Deaton, and, and so that's part of uh, one amicus brief, the one that Attorney Deaton filed. And then you've got all of these other firms. And actually, in my next video, there's a, by the way, there's a 13th, if I'm doing my counting right here, a 13th amicus brief filed. I'm going to talk about that in my next video. Uh, and, and by the way, it was filed by uh, an attorney within the XRP community, not Deaton and not Attorney Hogan. So uh, for the next video, I'll get into it. But uh, 13, so think about this. Couldn't be more clear that this, the, like, for almost all of them, has nothing to do with Ripple. Nothing. It's, it's just astonishing. But see, this is very telling. And so for the judge to see this message, like it makes crystal clear the degree to which it's important to separate what Ripple is doing with XRP versus um, you know, sales on secondary markets and the actual utility and how it's getting used. You know, it's just it, by the nature of existing. And so here, here, let me break it down further. The, the real reason that matters, in addition to what I just stated, is because the judge has the opportunity to specifically declare, and I think all this information, by the way, will help her to get there. She can specifically declare that... All XRP sales after a specific point in time, if she finds uh, that she could just say those have nothing to do with Ripple. Those, those are not investment contracts, transactions, none of it from a certain point onward. 
And it's crystal clear that today, like, XRP just has a life of its own at this point. If Ripple goes away, it continues to exist. So I'm hoping the judge will actually uh, come to some sort of conclusion along those lines. I'm, I'm optimistic that she will. Um, and then there was, uh, so yeah, there was, yeah, here we go. Reason number, I think it's the last one I read. Numerous companies have filed a Michi and cite how they use XRP without any knowledge or association with Ripple. Uh, reason nine, in 2014, 2015, and 2019, various government agencies cited how XRP or similar decentralized coins are not securities. And so again, I'll just pause and note, this is another thing that LBC didn't have going for it. You know, <laughs> With, with XRP, like I said, being a large cap coin, being an OG, it's been around for the longest damn time. It's well known from regulators the world over. And again, various government agencies cited how XRP or similar decentralized coins are not securities. And reason number 10, the SEC was informed by companies that they would use XRP as a cross-border payment method. Think about this. The SEC knew that this was happening, yet they didn't do anything to stop it from occurring? Might that be important to the judge? Me thinks the answer is yes. Think about the MoneyGram deal. You can think about, uh, you could even think about when Coinbase came and said, hey, we're going to list this. We don't think XRP is a security. And they just didn't say, don't do it. Like, there are so many reasons. And it's been around for a decade. Come on. John Deaton's knocking this out of the park here. Uh, really grinds my gears that we're having to deal with all this nonsense, but it is what it is. So you let me know what you think in the comment section below. And again, I encourage you, uh, now this video is wrapping up. It's a good time. Go ahead and type in Crypto Law TV in that search bar. Subscribe to John Deaton's Crypto Law Organization YouTube channel. Um, he doesn't post videos that regularly, but when he does, you're going to want to see him. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say, right? That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.